Welcome to It Happened in Grand Prairie, Texas, as we bring you the history of our city and some of the wonderful people that cause history not only to happen, but to become one of the most important things in our lives for just a few days. And we are so pleased to bring to you, first of all, history tape number 665, and we have Tammy Chan, who is the real genius in the city of Grand Prairie on beautification. And we also have a wonderful guest that she has brought with her today, and she's going to introduce a wonderful young lady that has a, a heritage of um, happenings in her past that she doesn't even know about, including her mother and father that have helped her in many ways to reach the status that she supports this very day. Tammy, who do you have with you today, my well, dear? Well, it's my honor and pleasure to bring Sydney Bryan with me yes. today. She was my intern last summer in my office, shadowed and worked with me. She worked, and uh, we nominated her for a big award, so I'll tell about that in a little bit. Yes, and uh, you might say that uh, in our viewing audience here today that could not be on the show with mm -hmm. us today, please introduce that young man. Oh, okay. <coughs> I also have a couple of guests, of course, Sydney's dad, and then I have my... And his name is Doug. Doug Bryan. Or Douglas <laughs> Bryan. Yes, Doug, I know him by Doug. <laughs> I know him by working man. <laughs> and then we also have uh, this summer, one of my summer interns this year, I have three. Uh -huh. And I have Eric San Juan with me today, and he's in our Youth for Environmental Action program also. Wonderful, all right. What's happening to him? Well, I wanted to thank you for giving us the chance to come on and tell you about what happened this last year in Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful. Every June, uh, the state's organization, Keep Texas Beautiful, recognizes the cities that accomplish certain things. And so we apply for several awards through Keep Texas Beautiful, and one of them is called the Governor's Community Achievement Award. We've won that a couple of times thanks to your leadership. We wouldn't have the Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful program or the commission if you hadn't done what you did years ago and uh, I wouldn't have my job because <laughs> you created that. So anyway, uh, we applied for the Governor's Community Achievement Award uh, trying to win our share of two million dollars uh, of landscaping awards um, and we did not win first place, we didn't win money, but we did win a, a special recognition called Sustained Excellence and that uh, means that we scored over 90 points for three consecutive years. And so that's a nice award. Next year, uh, I learned a few things that we could do differently to maybe win. But I wanted to tell your viewers that evidence of our volunteers' efforts that helped to win these awards is on the new streetscape on Main Street. There's a new sidewalk there, new trees, a uh, new parking lot that the city complemented with a decorative rail. Uh, Main Street's looking a lot better because of the award that w awards that our volunteers won through mm -hmm. the Governor's Community. Where was the, where was this happening for Keep Texas Beautiful? Were you in Beaumont or Houston or this year and next year? Uh, we got to go to San Antonio on the Riverwalk, and I want to say a special nod of thanks to the Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful Commission, uh, headed by uh, Kelly Shaw and they made it possible for us to take our Youth Award winner, and that's really who I wanted to brag about today. Um, we nominated Sydney Bryan for a Youth Leadership Award, which demonstrates what youth are doing to lead in the environment, and I've got a lot to tell you about her. And she won first place in the state in the high school level. And what's a especially great honor there is that that award is named after you. It's the Ruthie Jackson Youth Leadership Award, and I don't think it's easier to win because we're from Grand Prairie. I think they're a little tougher on us. And I, so think, I think they are just real tacky about some of the things because we should have won this one before, shouldn't we? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's really great. And, yes, uh, it is. I, I wanted, if I may, to tell you a few things that Sydney did and then let her share All right. uh, what she did also from her side. Good. Um, one thing was we have a, a strong community garden program getting a lot of recognition for that and and Sydney gardens with us at uh, the first Presbyterian community garden and orchard 
Yes. It wouldn't have and orchard if it weren't for Sydney. You want to tell them a little bit about what you did to make orchard happen? Uh, I went to a shade makers class with another lady from my church, and we got four uh, trees. We got two apple and two peach trees, and so now we're an orchard too. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it is. That's great. First Presbyterian Church now is it's on the one of the main arterials that we have here, and I see a lot of cars when they go down there. All of a sudden they put on their brakes and, they, and then they go a little slower and a little slower and then I see them turn around and come back and look at your garden site because it, it is it's right on that southwest third street and mm -hmm. and it is just a spectacular garden and, and you're part of it and, and making it an orchard uh, inclusive that was really great and we would like to congratulate you. And it, you garden with your grandparents there right? Yes uh, I share a plot with my grandparents. Oh. And we have plot number 18, and number we're growing a lot of stuff. What are you growing? Uh, we have, I just harvested all my potatoes and onions. I have a whole bunch of watermelon, and they have tomatoes and lettuce. Mm -hmm. Who's your grandparents? Lettuce. My grandparents are JC and Nan Bryan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Ruthie, Miss Ruthie, you helped to build that garden uh, with the Eagle Scout uh, project oh, that we had. Wasn't that a happening though? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that really was awesome. Yeah. Well, another thing that uh, Sydney did was um, help me to research. We had a lot of the, we have seven gardens, not including Kirby Creek, which is a composting yes. demonstration mm -hmm. garden. And a lot of the gardeners were calling and saying, something's eating up my fruit, something's this, and is it a good bug, a bad bug? And gosh, Miss Ruthie, I, I really didn't know all the good bag, bad bug stuff and I started looking online to try to figure it out oh my gosh there was too much information so I thought we'll just go to the gardens and take pictures of the bugs that are bugging our gardens and figure it out so tell her what you did to help me there uh, we took a lot of pictures we went to three or four different gardens and we just took pictures of any bugs that we could find and we put it together a presentation and you helped me to research. Do you remember a couple of the bugs you researched? Uh, I researched a couple of spiders to see if they were good or bad. I'm not exactly sure which kind they were. Yeah. But we they we were. forgot what they were, but uh, we I, she helped me to make the presentation, giving the research. She had it printed out what to say at our joint uh, community garden meeting. And then also, um, we're wearing t-shirts right now, the Youth for Environmental Action uh, program and um, we needed a t-shirt and a logo for our community garden program. Tell them, tell them about that and what the logo looks like. And oh, we uh, created a t-shirt for it with the logo and it's, uh, it's just plants growing different vegetables and fruit and then it says I'm a Grand Prairie community gardener. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think you have one of our shirts and that's Miss Sydney's design work right there. And oh, that I'm so is proud great. of everybody loves those T-shirts. And then um, Sydney also uh, helped me in the office with several things I had to do and just shadow me. She uh, accompanied me to a couple of meetings. One in particular, Mr. Tom Hart's office, where we were discussing uh, the bridge design for Hunter Farrell and a couple other things like that. So these kids who do the Youth for Environmental Action have really a great chance to learn a lot about city government and, and add input if they have something constructive to say, and she did all along the way. So that's why I nominated her for this award, and I'm really proud that she got to tell them what you got. I got an award uh, at the uh, Texas Keep Texas Beautiful convention. Yes. I got first place in that for all the stuff that I'd done. That is wonderful. And did you get any? Oh, and I got a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and um, it was the first time that you haven't been there to present those awards personally, but you were there. It was really exciting to uh, see her get the award, and then the young man that won the award of excellence above and beyond. Yes. Did, he was something else. This little kid motivated his entire community. Where and was he from? I can't remember where he was from, but I remember that um, he just personally took it upon himself to do some cleaning up. And then 
added people onto him and he it was like rings on a tree with him in the center it just groups and groups and groups of people grew around him leading the effort to clean up and it was really exciting so that oh, was a good choice there isn't that exciting yeah and uh, I want to tell your audience too about Sydney that um, she's 13 I hope you don't mind me telling your age <laughs> I look older than that but she's 13 and goes to Pantigo Christian Academy and so I want to encourage any parents and youth who have a, a child who genuinely wants to make a difference in their community especially environmentally oriented we do have a program for them to intern during the summer it's, you don't get paid but she did get to go to San Antonio for free thanks to Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful Commission voting to send her and get got to learn a lot so it was really exciting about that I, I also if I have a minute I'll tell you a little bit about our other things that we did this year uh, for Keep Grand Prairie Beautiful that helped us to win that award. You have a goal like right. come on. Okay well uh, Miss Ruthie of course I mentioned that we had a strong um, community garden initiative and um, we built or we plan to build three new gardens um, one at Grand Prairie Family Church. We upgraded the one at the Luckett Community Garden, switched from um, wooden beds to cinder block beds, and then we went from eight beds to 42 beds at Russ Glen. And Russ Glen, uh, the leader of that garden is Liesl Arredondo, and uh, she has a, a wonderful group of people helping her too. And she um, designed some really creative raised beds for senior citizens and so um, most of those beds are quadruple high beds so that you can garden standing up. Oh that is great. Yeah and um, some of the gardeners are taking the um, job to beautify that garden with flowers so we nominated them for an award and they won second place in the civic um, awards category or civic volunteerism so that was nice. I don't know well, if you that. Well that was good. Yes. Yes. And then um, we also had a strong year with our Adopt a Stream cleanup program. When, when we apply for this Governor's Community Achievement Award, we have to write and, and indicate what we did in seven areas of leadership in the environment. And uh, one of them is litter prevention and cleanup. And I want to give a special nod to the North Texas River Runners. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're a group of volunteers that practice kayaking with us every single month. We're going to do it every Friday, the second Friday of every month. And uh, they bring their boats, they teach my volunteers, and we practice rolling over in case we're in the creek and, <laughs> you know, reaching for trash and you roll over in your kayak, you want to be able to get, get back up. Right. And uh, they have cleaned a section of Fish Creek and advocated for more um, heavy work to be done by some of the utility companies that have a bunch of brush that have dropped and uh, they move tons of litter out of there and every year this event grows and so I'm just really grateful for their work I think we may have some pictures to show some of their before and after uh, work with their accomplishments and then our adopt a street groups um, we I want to give a special nod if I could to Clyde Golden and Loyal Roland with the cities of Grand Prairie Streets Department yes. we would not be able to do what we do adopt a streetwise if it weren't for them putting up our signs and monitoring the condition of those signs and telling us hey this group isn't doing what they said they would do and so uh, Clyde and Loyal have changed out all of the old signs to all of the new signs and where we have groups that weren't able to fulfill their commitment or vacancies we put up signs at the bottom that says this street is available for adoption so I do have several sections available but right now we have 117 groups or individuals and so each group gets two signs one at the beginning one at the end that says that they've adopted that street section and then we ask them to clean that four times a year and there's one group in particular that I, I just have to nod to too and that's control product and creative embroidery oh yeah that group um, led by Shad Dooley um, they are so faithful and the Grand Prairie Democrats too led by Lydia Alcon. It Mr. Frigo picks up litter five days a week along his street and mm. if it weren't for these groups and individuals who took the time to care about litter along the right of way we'd have a much harder job to do and that job of litter collection 
um, Ms. Rita, you were a part of making this possible, uh, is done um, professionally by participants in our Weed and Seed Job Training yes. Program mm -hmm. led by MECO, which y'all agreed to fund. And um, so we have a crew of people who've been in trouble with the law who are trying to prove to an employer that they do want to work, that they can work, and that they have a good work ethic. And we say, okay, show us. And, and we're looking at them and making referrals to other employers, and they go through several levels. Well, they do the litter collection along the city right of ways five days a week, eight hours a day. And we have a massive number of pounds of litter that gets cleaned up through that. So um, our, our neighborhoods are doing great things. Oak Hollow, Sheffield Village had a beautiful uh, project on their walls. Uh, we can't really claim that as a volunteer effort, but it was volunteers who went door to door to get that neighborhood involved in the public improvement district to make that happen. Um, we're you know, ever looking for other ways to make the city more beautiful and we're um, have some public art projects that um, where we did some public art, but we're, we've got some public art coming up also that hope to nominate us for uh, future awards. So um, our, our gardeners are becoming ever more aware of the environmental impact of fertilizers and mm -hmm. pesticides and and herbicides, the effect of that on stormwater pollution, it runs off and it goes into the storm drains and has all kinds of negative impacts. So a real important part of our garden program is educating residents about composting, taking that grass and leaves and turning it into natural fertilizer Ooh, yes. that's slow release and doesn't affect the storm water like the chemicals do. So. She was part of helping to educate some of that. And I think you've had our composting class. Did you have Compost 101 yet? No, I don't think oh, I have. I've got one coming up. Okay. <laughs> got to get you in that. So um, we have billboards around the city and lots of, lots of different ways to, to educate. We're on Facebook. We have a website with 40 different buttons, Miss Rithi. Adopt a oh. Cemetery, where you can sign up to adopt a cemetery and go clean it. Uh, we've got Adopt um, a Neighbor, where you can help a neighbor. We've got, of course, Adopt a Street and Adopt a Stream. Uh, we've got the Shade Maker Citizen Forestry Program that we do. Um, we also have a tool lending program where we loan free tools for residents where we can help. Uh, if you get a code citation because you have um, you know, low-hanging branches and you just need a saw, we have free saws. If you uh, need to borrow a power washer to clean your driveway, we have that. Um, if, if you need a lawnmower because your grass is high, we loan those tools for free. And that's, some cities do that, but they don't do what we do, which is A, free, and B, we deliver if you don't have a way to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's a real popular program we're always asked about. And then our school program, in partnership with Tracy Hollis and yes. um, authorized uh, by Dr. Hull, the Green and Clean Campus program, all Grand Prairie schools are involved in that. All of them recycle this year. A uh, notable thing that we had happen was um, Rayburn Elementary led the way for a citywide school plastic recycling campaign and they finished in the top 10 in the nation How for wonderful. plastic recycling for a school and a community. And so that was oh, it was a big effort. Miko and the crew collected those plastics, and Stacy Ainsley and the staff at Rayburn did a great job of letting us know, hey, go pick up the plastics at Bowie Elementary and take them over to Rayburn. So all the schools jumped in and helped with that. Oh, good. And then we have a, a strong clean company program where we try to get the companies involved in uh, doing their part to keep their storefront clean and beautiful. Um, and getting their employees involved. Um, Lockheed Martin is always a strong leader for us, doing several cleanups and helping to fund initiatives. And another nod, I wish I could claim it, but uh, Michael Stanley and Steve Collins and Code Enforcement, Yes, they have done a great job in working with the auto salvage um, industry. They have a wonderful newsletter, which I mentioned in our award application. We can't do it all. We're supposed to say what the community does. And gosh, um, I, I really want the citizens to know that they are doing a great job working with those salvage yards, um, giving them beautification awards and, uh, you know, 
it's a nice drive through there now with landscaping and trees and water for the trees. Didn't used to have all of that. So takes a takes a whole lot of people to make a city beautiful. And um, our last year we had uh, over 120. Uh, uh, gosh, I got to get this right. There's over 120 thousand um, hours of volunteerism marked in in our program with and those hours were work I'm turning red because I can't remember the exact numbers but it was like um, 36,000 volunteers Miss Ruthie uh, the Dr. Street groups doing four cleanups a year the Dr. Street groups the the volunteers in the gardens oh I can't keep track I cannot keep track. <laughs> no, I know, but it's so wonderful. How about Shady Grove Garden? You doubled the size of it last year, didn't you? Well, we did. Um, uh, thank you for bringing them up. Uh, under the leadership of Billy and W.L. Colbert, now yes. Sandy Memendus. Oh, yes. And um, some of their staff, uh, they have, or not staff, volunteers, they have added a half acre yes. row garden that um, we're all into learning about no till row gardening and um, Shady Grove has adopted that in a beautiful way and so basically what that is is um, layering organic material and topping it off with some mulch. Now mm -hmm. at Shady Grove we did have the benefit of um, one of the gardeners had some plowing equipment and we had started that process. He fine-tuned it and now we're doing the no-till gardening from here on out. They're growing rows and rows of tomatoes, um, they have a three sisters garden, and three sisters is where you grow one crop, like corn, and then you plant another crop at the base of it, beans, uh -huh. to grow on the corn, and then another crop at the bottom, which helps create or prevent um, little critters from getting to the beans yes. and the corn, and that's squash. So that's a, an American Indian style uh, gardening program. So. Um, that is very clever. Yeah, and uh, the bulk of the food grown in the row areas at our community gardens are donated to our food banks. And um, Shady Grove is a strong uh, supporter of the People That Care program and Operation Blessing. So they are a food pantry right there. And that's one thing that we look for when we partner with the facility to do a community garden is, is how can we distribute the food the USDA has taken a look at all communities across America. USDA means U United States Department of Agriculture. Yes. And to determine where are there clusters of neighborhoods where they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And Grand Prairie has seven food deserts. It's amazing. And so our strategy is to try to build these gardens in or near those food deserts so people living in that area can grow their own food, yes. have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, but the row garden area can be funneled through a food bank to other hungry families. So we're real excited about that. Um, I should tell you too that Grand Prairie Family Church benefited from a Shady Grove project. Yes. Uh, they, um, actually it was kind of sad, but one of their coolers went out of their uh, food storage area and they had a lot of fruits and vegetables go yes. bad. <laughs> So they called us and said, oh, we, we know that we don't want to waste these. Can you compost them? And so uh, we gathered them up from people that care and rented a chipper mulcher to chip and mulch the fresh fruits and vegetables. And, oh, that was a mistake. If you've ever put mushy tomatoes and strawberries and stuff in a chipper mulcher for big trees, yes. you are making pulp and squishing out fruit juice. A mess. It was a, it was a fruit juicer. And it got all stuck and clogged, and you had to, you couldn't reach in. You had to spray water in, and then it would cough, and you got covered with <laughs> it was poor Miko, Nathan, and his crew. But uh, we layered out in their field um, cardboard and, and the mushy stuff that we knew we didn't need to chip and mulch. And then we put the cabbages in, and those things, man, when they snapped, it was like a projectile. Yeah. And the... Uh, you know, layered all of this organic material about uh, two feet high, covered that with compost, covered that with some uh, or soil that we had, and then our next step is cover it with mulch. So it'll be probably three, three and a half feet high, and we're not going to garden in it this year. We're going to let it work the let soil. Let it work its way down. That's the goal, is let all that organic material seep down into the soil, and then we'll, uh, you know, part it and, and grow in the soil. 
Um, now, we may have a million and one baby strawberry plants or tomatoes <laughs> just come up from the seeds that were, you yes. know, it's going to be a crazy experience and experiment. So we're excited about that. I want to thank you all very much for being here today. I want to thank you especially See. for being the, the recipient of something from Keep Texas Beautiful that is really near and dear to all of our hearts. And thank you for being here. And uh, the Bryan family, give a salute to all of the family because we uh, appreciate everything that they have done in the past and what you're going to do in the future. Thank you. And thank you, Tammy, for being here and, and bringing us the excitement of this. And we want to thank Mr. Don Johnson for all of the things that he'll do to make this uh, an acceptable presentation from Tammy Chan, Tammy Chan as the history uh, of a trip to San Antonio, Texas for Keep Texas Beautiful and our wonderful, wonderful youth winner. And thank you for watching our show. Thank you.